Hello guys, welcome back to another video. It's Edmond here and today I'm bringing you another interesting informative video and currently I'm at Zipline in Vopsi along the Waliwali -Wali Road in the northeast region of Ghana. So today we are about to learn about the operations of the Zipline, how the facility is helping uh, promote healthcare delivery services and whatever they and do here as well as how best it's serving the community stick and stay as we learn more about this particular place and it's going to be very informative i promise you on that until then let's get going to learn yeah welcome um this is the zipline fulfillment center uh, this current distribution center is in uh, Vopsi. This area is called Vopsi, but we are in Waliwali, -Wali, a few minutes from Waliwali. -Wali. Um, it's the third distribution center in Ghana. Ghana currently has four. The first one is in around Suhum, um, Omenako. The, the second one is in Impanya. This is the third one, and the fourth one is in Sifu also. So those are the four distribution centers. Um, the tour will be in two phases. We are going to give you a tour of the fulfillment warehouse. Um, when we say fulfillment warehouse, it basically has to do with everything that we send across, like the blood, the medical products, the vaccines that we send out, how inventory is managed and all that. Then finally, we'll see how the drones are flying. That's what is, like excites everyone, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to show you how you're just going to cover your foot when you're going in. Um, so you do this you enter the red zone then you make sure your other foot is not in then you cover your other foot as well <laughs> then you step in so you need a lot of balance you can sit and do this oh. yeah um oh <laughs> so for you you can just put your foot there just put it in the cabinet then walk here so i give you one pair. okay um, so welcome once again. So this is the fulfillment warehouse. We're going to go through a tour about how like everything is done here, all the processes that we undertake. Um, so you can see that we have some products on the shelf. Uh, we, I want to take you through how the products end up on the shelf. Um, so just as if you are working in a supermarket and you have you are selling bread, pure water. It's coming from somewhere, so definitely we have some upstream suppliers that serve us with all the products that we have. The classes of products we have, medical products, vaccines, blood products, and since the COVID pandemic to the government of Ghana has given us the, or has taxed us to send out personal protective equipment and also um, uh, COVID samples to testing facilities. So for the Omenako, the first distribution center sends COVID samples to Nuguchi. Then the second distribution center in Empanya sends COVID samples to KCC, our testing facilities. Yeah, so some of these things, yeah. Our upstream suppliers are the regional medical stores for here, Northern and Upper East. Those are the people that give us the medical products. For the vaccines, we have expanded program of on immunization, EPI. And for the blood products, we have the National Blood Services. And these, uh, the National Blood Services works with um, the zonal blood services. So for specifically for this place, we work with the Borga Regional Hospital, the zonal center. So those are blood donated by individuals to yes. them? Yes, yes, exactly. So they just serve as upstream suppliers where we take these products from. Yeah. So one thing that it's one unique thing that you will see when you look at the products on the shelf is that every product you see has a zipline barcode. It's an alphanumeric number that identifies this product uniquely. So when I pick this product from the shelf and I scan the product, it's and I scan the product in our system, you would find the name of the product pops up, the weight of the product pops up, batch number, expiry date, every single product that you need on uh, uh, every single thing you need on this product pops up. Um, just so when you watch uh, CSI Las Vegas and you get someone's fingerprint, like the data, exactly, so that's how it works. So it's a unique identifier for this particular product. Before this ends up on the product, we do something we call visual inspection. Okay. When the product comes in, so we check out for leakages from uh, products that are like in liquid form we check out for leakages to make sure that the batch number on the product correlates with the batch number here expiry date correlates and every other detail on this box correlates with what we have on the product we also look out for things like um, for um, injections or vials we look out for broken vials or ampoules that are broken i'm going to i'll, I'll show you an example soon so we look out for all these things if we notice that there's any issue with any product that affects quality, we don't accept it into the fulfillment system or the zipline inventory system. So when a product is given the green light, then we assign this code to the product. That is why you see codes on all the products that we have here. Yeah. 
so that's how the receiving is done uh, we here at zipline receive um, uh, calls from facilities or we we communicate with our facilities using three main methods uh, the phone call the whatsapp message and the text message so these are the three methods that people can reach us with uh, phone calls text message or whatsapp message uh, when that is done so for instance when i receive a call from a facility this is my order taking interface where i receive the orders from we call it the customer service view uh, mind you this is like an internally generated uh, software that we use to manage inventory here uh, send out orders add orders pack orders and all other things so you go to the add order tab then you select the method that the person contacted you with whether it's a phone call a whatsapp message or a text message then after that you select the orderer who is ordering so maybe dr a from facility b or dr c from facility d we need to we need to indicate that then the next thing that we indicate is the type of order here at zipline we have three types of orders we have emergency orders so for instance if um, uh, you have a cousin who has been uh, bitten by a dog and is sent to the hospital needs anti-rabies he gets to the hospital then then so it's an emergency so you have need of the product then then for resupply orders for instance um, i need um, a paracetamol in my facility but no one has come yet to use the paracetamol but i want to keep it in my facility because i want some minimum stock so those are resupply orders and for scheduled deliveries just as the name suggests maybe you book um you are buying something for Jum from jumia and it will be delivered to you tomorrow and like you can track it yes. so that's how the scheduled delivery works okay. you tell me that oh we have a vaccination clinic tomorrow okay. and we need so so and so vaccines so deliver it at 8 a.m tomorrow okay. that's how the scheduled function works so when you select that type of request the final thing that you select is the product that you want okay. whether it's paracetamol whether it's um, um, an analgesic whether it's an antibiotic you indicate it there the quantity and whether or not the facility has stock then you submit it Immediately you do that, the order moves from this interface, which is the order taking interface or customer service view, to the packaging interface where we can pack the products for okay. delivery. Okay. Yeah, do you have any questions at this point? All right, so um, what I basically want to ask is mm. most of these medicines, like you said, are from the uh, regional yeah, medical, uh, stores. medical stores. Yes. Why should they deliver it to this place was instead of the hospitals directly? Exactly. Yeah. Um, Zipline is here because um, we have quite some challenges in the Ghanaian healthcare supply chain. Uh, the top or the chief of them is the fact that the facilities that we work with some are no more trouble. Um, they are hard to reach. Okay. It's, um, so a classic example is uh, a district that recently reached out to us because their district has been totally cut off by the seasonal rain. So it's very important that we step in to help deliver these products. Um, as you classically know, the drones like defy terrain. So whether the road is bad or not, it doesn't affect the drone. So our drones can fly over all these like uh, challenges and impediments that we have with our roads, uh, our road network. That is why it's very important that the plan is here. Um, when we go into the tour, uh, we would explain why really like this is necessary uh, so that we would get the clear picture of how these yeah. things work. Yeah. So I think we work here with um, pharmacists or doctors or, um, or just if the medicine comes in, then the medicine comes in, then you are just to the with the... Okay. Um, so... If I get you right, um, the kind of backgrounds that we have here, allied health professionals. Personally, I'm a medical laboratory scientist. Okay. Um, uh, we have pharmacists here, we have doctors here, we have nurses here, we have nutritionists. So these are some of the backgrounds that we work with. It's very important because our products, like we have blood products that um, the medical laboratory scientists will be more conversant with. We have medical products where the pharmacists will have to step in and all that. So we make sure we cater for all these like groups so that uh, when we need expertise on any of these groups, anyone can just uh, come in and help us with what we need. Yeah, so those are the backgrounds that we have. Uh, Zeppelin doesn't make any uh, technical decisions on behalf of the facility. So if you're a doctor and you call us and you need so-so-and-so products, all we do is to deliver that product. We don't tell you that, uh, why not order this? Why not? No, we don't do those kind of decisions here yeah we are a logistics company we deliver what we uh, we have and what you need so in this case it means that the doctors you are working on any health professional is um is a professional? Yes. So we deal. We don't deal with patients. We deal with directly with the healthcare professionals. So when a nurse calls me or a disease control officer calls me and needs a vaccine, we know that that's a person who has been fully trained to know how to administer these products. Yes. And are you so, fully working with government hospitals or your private hospitals? We currently work with 
government hospitals that okay. are under NHIS. Okay, under NHIS. Yes, does it mean that NHIS covers all the medicines? Yes, a, a significant amount of the uh, medicines that we have here is covered by NHIS. Yeah. So if there is a private hospital or clinic who has NHIS accredited? Yes, we can. We can, we can yes, yeah. we can do that. Okay, so they have to contact you and go to a process. Yes, we do training for the facilities. They need to understand how the system works before we can start serving them. Yeah, so we go through all these processes before. Yeah, okay. So going on, I want to, um, as I, we mentioned earlier, when the order comes, it is submitted into the system. So we need to go through how, like, the order is packed. So this is how, yeah, this is how, this is what the orders are packed in. This is the red box that we have here. So this is how the orders go out. So the box we have currently is made up of three main components. Uh, the red part we see is made up of biodegradable paper. This is the, comp the red box we see. Then we have an in inset, an air inset, which is made up of uh, rubber. Um, this is what helps with buoyancy. Um, our drones don't land. When they get to the facility, the drop mechanism opens up and the box falls in gently. So the whole idea is that we want to put systems in place so that the integrity of the products in there will still be intact when it gets to the facility. Um, let me give you a classic example of some of the products we have and why they need to do that. So we have products like this that comes in ampoules and they are internally fragile. So we need to put systems in place so that when they get to the facility, this will still be usable yeah that is why we put all these systems in place uh what you see on the what you see on the packing table here is uh, another material that is used to pack um this is uh, damage that we used to pack or insulation paper uh, the way the material has been made you see how the lattice forms it makes sure that when you wrap a product in it let me use this as an example when you wrap a product in the product is still intact even if it falls from a higher place so th these are some of the systems that we put in place so that the integrity of the product is kept from the time it leaves this place to the time it gets there um, i will go a little into some of the temperature sensitive products so we know vaccines are temperature sensitive they need to be kept in an optimum temperature range so for products like that we add something we call ice packs when we are wrapping it so we know that and all these processes have been thermo validated knowing that from the time it leaves the distribution center to the time it gets to the facility it will still be in the optimum range for the facilities to use yeah okay i'm going to go ahead to go through some of the equipment that we have here so the first fridge that you're seeing is the fridge for the blood products okay. um one thing that resonates with the whole zipline service is speed and accuracy when it comes to the deliveries that we do right. so we uh, from the time the order comes to the time the order leaves the distribution center um or the, from the time the order comes to the time we hand over the package to be sent out to the facility it's supposed to take about just three minutes so we that's why we put all these systems in place um, the fridge is appropriately labeled so you when you enter the fridge you know where exactly you are picking out from the fridge you know which component you are taking which component of blood you are taking out so all these things have been put in place to make sure that the process is as seamless as possible and it adds to the speed with which we can work this fridge contains the vaccines that we send out so all the vaccines that we send out are from this fridge uh the first the second third fourth fridges are all for vaccines as well as you can see so this is how it looks like um, the final cooling device is a freezer and what it does or what it has is uh, it contains the frozen component of blood which is the fresh frozen plasma and the cryoprecipitate this is the fridge that houses these products uh, one would ask like why is it even important to go through all these things when people come to see us uh, let's take a classic example you all know tth right so imagine you don't know okay this uh, that's Tamale teaching hospital oh yeah okay. so imagine all these fridges were at tth mm -hmm. and they had the products that we have now and a facility in wale wale needs the product yeah. you know the number of hours yeah, it takes yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. so the whole introduction of the zip line into the Ghanaian uh, healthcare supply chain is the fact that we are centralizing the stock so that every facility will have equal access to it. Wow. So some chips compound in like a village somewhere will call in to order for 10 bottles of paracetamol syrup or a bigger hospital, maybe BMC, Baptist Medical Center, will call in to order for fresh frozen plasma or like a facility in maybe the Talensi district or Karaga district, a very like small facility will call in to order for something. If all these products were 
somewhere else we would have needed like a lot of logistical like means to bring them to where they need them but with zipline all the stock is centralized so that anyone who needs the product will have equal access to it so then the healthcare supply chain like provides equitable service to everyone that has need of them that is why like it's re really important for us to do this so i'm sure you've i've answered yeah, your yeah, earlier yeah, question the, the, the need for exactly right. so if everything is at one place and we have a means to send it that defies terrain then it's really a good deal or it's really a good thing initiative because um, whether seasonal rain or, uh, for instance, COVID, at the point we were not even supposed to have contact with people. So this is contactless yeah. and all that. So all these things are some of the like perks of like the zipline distribution service that has been introduced in Ghana, and it's really like a solid service. Yeah. So um, it's you are in contract with the government. Exactly, it's a private uh, public partnership. Yeah. Okay, okay, a private public partnership. Exactly. Okay. So it means the government is. You for the service for that we're dealing with, yes, but not for the medical. No, no, okay, so no. Okay, the government is supplying you the medical, exactly, so that you give it to Ex people. exactly, oh, okay. exactly, okay, okay. Exactly. Amazing. And and um, the health facility that we work with do not pay to Zipline. Okay. They still pay using their normal means, like paying to the regional yeah. medical yeah. store. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So and you, are, you are like a delivery Exactly. Company. How a delivery man works. Okay. That's how we work. It's a logistics company. So when uh, we take the product at one CD from the government, it's still one CD. When we take it two CD from the government, it's still two CD. The Zipline doesn't add any extra cost to any product that you see here. All the program medications, like the vaccines that are sent out free, it's still free when you take them from Zipline. So these are some of the things that people don't know and like would have to be enlightened on because we don't like um, interact in financially with any institution. We don't take money from them. They are still supposed to pay using their normal means of payments. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you really think this is something that African countries need to pick up? It's, 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 it's really important, just as I mentioned, because... Um, they, we have videos of like the facilities that are currently being affected by the even a classic example is the seasonal rain. Some facilities have been cut off completely and we still have pregnant women in there who need uh, products. We have children in there who need vaccines. We have people who, um, women who go through labor and still need blood. We have patients that are getting sick on a regular. And we are in the malaria season where people need, like rely on a lot of anti-malaria medication. So it's very important that we have a system that defies things like terrain. That, so you need a pro, um, facility that's like two hours away can be served in under 30 minutes. Okay. Exactly. So all these things like bring the service into perspective because we get all these benefits from the service that we currently render. So we need to look at all these things. Yeah. What's your source of electricity? Okay. So... Um, L let me start from the equipment. So the equip this equipment, for instance, is powered by the normal grid, the okay. national grid. Uh, but the f um, this equipment has a backup battery that lasts for 24 hours. Oh, okay. Beyond the backup battery, we have another one, uh, which is the UPS, that can last us for about 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Beyond the UPS, we have a plant that can last us as long as we want. Oh, okay. So all these backup like systems are, have been put in place we understand how like very important our services so all these things have been put in place so that we ensure that our products are kept in the optimum range and everything all the quality processes are followed yeah so are you able to fly even during rainy seasons rain or shine rain or shine wow. yeah rain or yeah, shine so currently we do a 16 hour shift uh, we start work at 7 a.m and close at 11 p.m um however if a facility needs a product as an emergency if you call me at 1 a.m i'll respond 2 a.m i'll respond so currently it's not a 24 7 service but for emergency deliveries anytime you reach out to me i'll respond yeah or any of us will be willing to respond to you yeah and that's such a nice yeah it is yeah our, our accommodation is not far away from this there's a few seconds away like five minutes you saw like that elegant yeah 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 I wanted to ask a question, but it just skipped. It just skipped, and yeah, no problem. When it comes, I'll just answer. Okay. Yeah. So, concerning the far away hospitals, yes, please. Like, the politician hospital, mm -hmm. which is quite far from this place, mm -hmm. how many minutes does it take? To so, the um, distance depends on like how long it is by road. So I can just give you estimates. I don't like we work with like two hundred and something facilities, so it's hard to keep up with the times. East, uh, a lot of regions, like not just Upper East, North, North East region. 
this facility yes we work this current distribution center serves about 250 something facilities within the 80 kilometer radius that we serve so we serve different districts in different regions okay so it yeah. means the drone flies to 80 kilometers 80 kilometers okay, yeah so if within, you within a straight 80 kilometers kilometer radius, radius you yeah you service. pick up yes yes okay. So the same as Omenako, which serves about 600 plus facilities. So depending on the saturation of health facilities you have around your, re, uh, your distribution center, yeah, it gives you a rough figure of how many facilities you serve. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is the flight operations area. So this is where like the drone action takes place um just like we have like different versions of phones the current generation or the current version of the drone we have is called the sparrow and it has four major components so the first part is the wing this is the wing that you see it spans about 3.3 meters in length so this is the first component the second component is the battery so the batteries that are blinking are batteries that are like charging and the ones that are blue static lights are batteries that are fully charged the, these are the batteries and they are sitting on something we call the battery, uh, the smart charger. Yes, what the smart? So this is the second component. The third component is the body of the drone. We'll look, at, we'll look at the body of the drone shortly. And the final component is the nose foam. That is what she's holding. So this is how, this is the nose foam. Um, um, this is the fourth component. So as I mentioned, the wing is the first component, battery, then we have the body of the drone, then the nose foam. So let's look how the body looks like. So um, this is a safety area. So before you get in here, you are supposed to wear your safety glasses. So each one of us should, yeah. If you are wearing glasses already, that's fine. So yeah, we are ready to go. So as I mentioned, this is the fourth component, which is the body of the drone. So as you're seeing what he's doing is that he's scanning a qr code on the box that i showed you inside and he's scanning a qr code on the body of the drone what this like uh, activity does is that it assigns the package to the drone so when the drone leaves the distribution center the drone knows exactly where it's going so that's what this is for yeah so let's just take note of how the insertion is being done all right so he closes the compartment yeah so we are going to see how a launch is done and when we say launch is the drone leaving the distribution center and how a recovery is done as well it means when the drone comes back to the distribution center how we capture it from the air so we are going to see how all those two things work is that okay all right these are engineers so they will know, understand the system better but i'll explain as much as i can um, so the apparatus you're seeing now the a-shaped structure is our recovery system so this is what captures the drone for mid-air when it gets to the distribution center. Uh, it communicates with the drone uh, using a network system we call the line of sight. Right. So when the drone is almost at the distribution center, it sends like messages, about 20 messages per second to the recovery system to let it in simple terms know that like I'm coming back to the distribution center. So like get ready for me, something right. like that, yeah. Um, initially, the two black holes we are seeing in between were like uh, vertical, but okay. because the communication has been done, it has to prepare to capture the drone. Okay. So you are going to see how that capture process is done. Um, the direction of the pole means the drone is going to recover from the left. Okay. And this is highly affected by the wind direction. So depending on the direction of the wing, uh, please come here. So depending on the direction of the wing, the drone can either recover from the left side or the right side. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to see how short, shortly how this is done in a few seconds. Okay, so the drone is coming back. Okay. Yeah. Um, mind you, this process is supposed to be as precise as possible uh, because um, the capture is done. This part of the drone is what is captured. There's the tail hook. It's very small, so the process will have to be as seamless as possible to make sure the capture is um, successful. Yeah. Are there some people that have failed to catch the drone? Yeah. That, ha that happens in like one in a thousand um, recoveries or one in 
like 900, 800 recoveries. And as I mentioned, one of the factors that um, this system uses is the wing direction. So there are times when like it passes over the recovery system and the recovery is not successful. And what the drone basically does is that it goes round a hold and tries again and mostly like the second try it's successful. So the wind direction can cause like a miss but it just goes round and tries again from a different direction if need be. So when it's successful, then the flight operators who are engineers will just go and like take the various components apart. Okay. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was like the part um, why like we have a modular system like when it comes to the drone. Imagine like our bodies had different parts that needed to be put together like a Lego. Okay. If one part is not working, you can just pick another hand and just yeah. Okay. So that's basically the principle. They are called line replaceable units. So anytime when one is not functioning, well maybe we have like a tear in this styrofoam, we can just pick another one instead of changing the complete drone. Yeah, exactly. So you can change the battery of your phone and not need to buy a new phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So what you saw me do was like the the black and white like I would call the because that you see actually there's a blue. So anytime okay, when you, see, <laughs> when you see the white one, the white one is the one that is now going to deliver at the facility. When you see a black one, it has delivered, it's now returning. So what I actually did was I was just trying to minimize the screen. We call this a scan. It's a transit plan. All the white fighters that you see are the routes that the drones use to get to the facility. And the red pointers that you see all represent the facility. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, we are in the uh, eastern part of Ghana. Yeah, but we serve as high as the upper eastern part. And we only have one facility that goes beyond the border. But it's just at the edge. Yeah. So, this is where we are, the green point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we deliver all the way. So, you can see this is Bogatanga. And then you have Pada and Boko around here. So these are all the facilities that we deliver to. Yeah. So we have some going to this direction. We have some going here. So we mostly just minimize it to kind of have a fair view of everything that is happening. And if I just want to focus on just one view, I just tap the view. So you see it has zoomed into it. Yeah, so I can now see everything that is happening in the view. So the round round things that you see. Call them both. So let's say um, as we are flying, you know we are governed by the aviation like the military. Okay. Maybe they call us that the military is like having a patrol and exercise with the helicopter. That means the drone has to be kept like in a safe position so that it doesn't collide with the helicopter. So these things are there so that the drone can be able to hang around there and so the military exercise is that before we use it. So they would alert you yes, and yeah. then they are at the at what speed or at what acceleration does it launch back? Okay, so can you come closer? It varies. Oh, it depends, but my, most of the time we have between 28 meters per second to 30. So that is what you can see here, the airspeed. Yeah, so that is the current speed that this it's drone is traveling. traveling. So we can maybe go to another one too. So you see it's also at 28 yeah. meters per second. Yeah. But the one it is coming in to recover, it drops to 22 meters per second. So I think she was telling you something about the different you were asking if they could come from the left or the right. So um, I don't know if you remember when we were kids, we used to put some cloth around us, then we are running, you see the wind going in those direction. So when the wind is coming to recover, when it has an opposing wind, it puts it slows it down. And we need it to be at this lower speed to be able to let this I catch it when it's coming to America. So anytime the wind senses that more wind is blowing from this direction. We always try to meet the wind head up, so that I hope it is easy. So if it, most of the time it comes from this side, because we have a lot of what we call here tailwind coming from this direction. But then if it senses that the wind is blowing from this direction, we will now recover from this side, so that it will help it to slow down. Because if it's coming from here, and the wind is blowing, blowing from this thing, sorry, that means we give it more speed, and it might miss the capital line that is happening. Okay. So we have to make it in such the drone is smart, 
in such a way that they are fully autonomous. Okay. When we send it right now, everything has been programmed. So it will take all the decisions by itself. When it sends it, let's say, high wind or anything that can um, make its mission go wrong, it will quickly trigger, in, I said, we call it an exception. Okay. It will trigger a fault and then quickly come back for us to be able to pick our whatever is happening. So there are a lot of things that agents are able to do that the, I would say, average or ordinary thing can do. Uh, so they are really smart. And I think we have done 95 flights. That's why you have most of them. But in this part of our uh, area, like, we have a lot of facilities. And when you see the drone go, traveling for like 44 minutes or 30 minutes by road, that could take you as much as two to three hours. Oh, okay. Yesterday we went to a facility that is just five minutes away by the drone. But by going by car, it took almost 30 minutes to get there. Wow. So that shows you how fast it happens to get The route has been preloaded in the, in the embedded in the battery of the drone, so the drone knows exactly where it is going. Immediately, that process, the confirmation process, is done. So all the all these things you see are the drones that are from a facility or going towards a facility. So all these, so when it knows that it has it's carrying a package to Tola Presby, the drone knows exactly where it's going, which route to use, and all. Yeah. Yeah.